guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Welcome back to my channel. We're here for another one of our mass making sessions. And today, the pockets that I would like to do for your junk journals were inspired by Dee Dee um, Farago. She is doing a 3 in 15, um, I can't remember now whether she called it Don't Panic for Christmas or <laughs> something, something similar to that. And in her week one, I think it was episode three, and again, I will try and remember to link it below. She made these awesome pockets using junk mail envelopes um, and then they had a little sort of fold over side piece. So I thought we could make some of those. So what I've brought along is a bunch of junk mail envelopes. Now, I will say that obviously when I first watched her video, I hadn't really quite cottoned on to the fact she had actually opened her junk mail envelopes at the top. So they were still sealed down the side because she then cut them into half. So I've got sort of a variety. I've got some that, you know, have been opened at the top and I have to say not many um, because obviously, you know, I just tend to sort of rip envelopes down the side. But hopefully we can alter the ones that have been, um, you know, opened at the side and utilise those anyway. And then I've also got a bunch of um, papers to be able to cover the envelopes with. Obviously, I've got some book page and things, and obviously, you know me, I have all sorts of other rubbish all over my desk to decorate them and things like that. Um, I've got my scissors, I've got my glue, and the other thing that, you know, I think is quite handy is obviously I've just got an old card to be able to spread my glue out on the, the pockets themselves. I think that's all that we're going to need. Um, yeah, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Um, so, yeah, I would love it if you would join with me to make these funky pockets for my junk journals. So let's get my ones that are trimmed across the top first because they're going to obviously be my easiest ones to work with. Uh, no, these are all side. Oops, I've still got one that's not even, not even opened yet, so let me just put that in my lap. <clears throat> I'm terrible with junk mail and, you know, often it just goes instantly in the bin. I don't even, don't even open it. So, um... I mean, thankfully, we don't get so much junk mail as we obviously used to years ago because there's lots of things, you know, um, where they've kind of stopped people sending out junk mail so much. So we're not sort of, oops, we're not sort of inundated like we were years ago. But I mean, of course, you do get the odd, the odd bit. So just going to trim this down now. Actually, this is obviously, you know, as you can see, this is a long. Oh my gosh, this is really sealed. It's it's not wanting to actually come open. Um, as you can probably see, this is a long shaped envelope, which again, not quite sure how this will work so well with a long shaped envelope. And actually, now I've just realized I probably would have been better off doing this one on the side. Oh well, we'll we'll come to that when, when we come to it. So, right, I've got my ones that hopefully will be straightforward to use. So all that she did, now this one, as you can see, this is, you know, not even a used envelope. So I'm going to seal this down here, just with some glue. So, I mean, this was obviously just, you know, an envelope that I have had just in the drawer, probably, you know, for taking money to the school and things like that. Okay, so we just glue that down there. And then all that she did was chopped her envelopes kind of in half. So I'm going to just chop it down here. And obviously, again, you don't have to be too precise. You know, just judge it by eye. Don't think she used her window pieces. So I'll save those hopefully for another, another day. This one, we would have to make this quite a small pocket. Well, I guess that's okay still, isn't it? Yeah, I guess that's okay. So we'll just chop that one down here. Okay, this one here, we'll just chop that one down like that. And this one, again, just sort of cutting off the window portion. And this one, oh, where have I opened this? Oh, this might, oh yeah. So we've got another sort of small one here, so... Again, we'll just make that a tiny, tiny pocket like that. Okay. 
Now I'm trying to remember now what she did. It's quite hard when you follow other people's videos, isn't it? To actually remember the way round that they did it. Because what she did was obviously had a cut here and folded her flaps down. So it was kind of an envelope with a, a decorative portion here. Now, just wondering whether I'm actually better off gluing my decorative paper on and then folding the whole thing back. She didn't do that. But I'm just thinking from my point of view, you know, I struggle then to cut things accurately. So I think for me, I would probably find that easiest, I think. Yeah, I think I would. So, right, so what I'm going to do is just chop down some paper. Now, I'm not going to be accurate with this at all. Just going to kind of cut around here. <clears throat> like that and then what I'm going to do is glue this onto here okay so just take my glue kind of as close as I can to the edges and then obviously a good good covering through the middle but particularly here because that's where my cut is going to be so I just need to be a little bit aware of that really. And then just, whoops, pop that on over my envelope. Oops, I think I made a very good job of that. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness me, what is going on? Right, so spread my glue <clears throat> just to smooth that out okay and then I mean personally you know this is just how I find it easier to do things is to then trim them down to size if I tried to cut this piece of paper to the size of the envelope I just know for a fact that I would muck that up because you know it wouldn't be the size of the envelope it would be not the size of the envelope so for me personally I just find it easier to actually trim it up afterwards um you know I'm more likely to get it accurate doing that way than trying to cut it actually to size so that's your piece there and then she obviously cuts this kind of in the middle so again obviously I'm not measuring or anything I'm just going to cut cut a slit here <clears throat> Maybe it needs to be a bit longer than that. Obviously, I haven't done a dummy run of this and I possibly should have done. And she just folded her flaps down like that. And like that. So, I mean, obviously you can see here where my scrapbook paper or my, you know, my paper is then just kind of missing there so that's fine because I can just you know I can just even tear that off to be honest and that's fine and then obviously I want to put something in here probably just need to move that slightly okay something in here to cover up the blue I mean of course if the blue goes with your project that's that's fine isn't it you don't need to cover it up <clears throat> and then obviously something on my flaps as well so Right. I wondered whether that was going to fit in there, but no. So again, for me, I just like to sort of fold it roughly where, where it needs to be. This is just book page, so it's going to tear nice and easily. You know, again, this is just my, my methods, and I am not in any way trying to say that this is the best way. But this is just, you know, the things that I find quick and easy quick and easy for me to do so I would just put that in like that and then again trim it down here and that way you know I'm not putting it right the full way down the envelope or anything I'm just slotting it in a little bit if that makes sense so that it's down far enough to be hiding all of this <clears throat> so that's going to be that piece now for my little um, flaps here probably again I'm just going to take some book page, so this, you know, this book page, so in fact, I can just trim some of this off now. Again, I'm not going to go too close to that 
edge and then I've got a little bit of freedom you know with how I'm going to do that but what I would do now is put these on and cut around them so I think I'm going to do those first before putting this piece in and the reason for that is obviously if my glue seeps out it's only seeping onto the you know the back piece of that envelope then it's not then going to be on my book page so just tuck that like that and I've gone right up to the sort of edges as close as I can like that and then what I will do and again I have a feeling that Dee Dee possibly just cut hers here but what I'm going to do because again you know I don't want any of that blue showing so I'm going to trim that down a little here and here and then that can just fold over there and then you definitely don't have any of the blue showing so again I'm just going to take my glue so I've got the fold line now and I'm just going to run a little tiny bit here on that folded piece and tuck that into here now again you know this is my body method and I'm not not in any way saying you know this is the best way or this is how to do it I'm not saying that at all I'm just you know merely showing kind of the ways that I find best to work so for me this is you know this is a good way to do it okay and that way I don't have any blue if I were to cut this here like level with this I am just a bit of a you know rubbish cutter really when it comes to things like that so I kind of feel that actually I probably wouldn't be able to cover up all of that blue so for me personally it's just going to be more accurate to have that folded over okay so again just going to trim that down and I'm just going to trim it down here just so as I've got a smaller piece to work with basically and then I'm going to stick that there and then exactly the same as the other side And I mean, now, you know, I'm kind of thinking, oh, well, maybe I should have um, done the flaps first. But I mean, obviously, I then haven't covered the, you know, the this part of the envelope. So, you know, it swings in roundabouts probably, but play around and find the method that works best for you. Um, you know, because I mean, one size doesn't fit all, does it? And, you know, just because I find this kind of way easiest it doesn't necessarily follow that everyone's going to find that easiest so again just going to cut around here and then just go slightly in there just tear that off and obviously this is just some vintage book page so I mean this is very forgiving and I can just you know literally tear it which you know that makes it nice and easy to use so again just squash that down where where my fold is going to be and then I open that back out and just dab some glue on like that okay and then fold that over and then it's going to be nicely nicely stuck in place so again just pressing the glue down with my wipe here okay and you know you can see I mean I've got a little bit of book page here overhanging that's fine I can just trim that down there we go so that looks lovely now and then take my piece that I cut off that just slots in here I think it was this way around Okay, and then I'm going to glue this and just slot that into there and trim that up. So, pop some glue on. Oops, surely not having glue problems already. Okay, so again, I go all around here, lots of glue in the middle. And then what I like to do is again, run the glue on the 
pocket itself on the outside edge, if you see what I mean. Because again, I don't know which part of this book page is actually going to be on the edge. So for me, again, I think that's easiest to do that. And then slot, slot that in like that. And then kind of slide that in. Oops, and obviously it's a little bit fiddly, this bit, but... But, you know, not too bad. It's not kind of un, undoable or anything. It's, you know, it's perfectly fine. Like that. Oops. Oh, my gosh. Maybe not quite like that. Okay. And then, again, you can get your glue spreader. Just spread that around. Press that down. And, you know, you might even find it easier to turn it over and do it from the other side. And then you can just chop this off in line with the back of the envelope. Okay. And then that's it. That's your pocket. Probably goes up that way because that's the way the text is. So really nice pockets, aren't they? So thank you so much, Dee Dee, again, if you catch this video. Awesome idea, beautiful pockets. You know, really nice and a lovely way to use up those junk mail envelopes. So. Yeah, really nice. So I will talk you through one more because I realised that there were quite a few steps to that. And, you know, you might have wondered what I was doing a couple of times. So I'll just talk you through, um, you know, another one. And then probably I can I can just be a bit quiet. So, or a bit quieter with regards to what we're doing and have a chat and just a nice time. So, yeah. Right, so I'm going to pop that to one side. So I'll bring in the next one. So, and as you can see, I mean, they're completely, you know, different colours and, all, you know, what have you. So that doesn't kind of matter at all. So I'm going to take another paper. So, oh, by the way, those papers that I just used, these ones, these are from my Victorian Floral Set 2. And I'm not plugging my stuff. I know I said this in another video recently, but it's only that I have actually had, um, you know, comments sometimes saying you know which papers were you using are they in your shop and you know one lady actually said you know I'd really like to know what papers you're using when you use them so yeah I'm not trying to plug my stuff but obviously I realise that some people do like to know you know what papers it is that I'm using so please just ignore me if you you know don't want to hear me talking about that and going on I'm not I'm not just here kind of trying to just sell things, I promise. Okay, so we'll do this one this way round, I think. So again, just put lots of glue on, close as I can to the edges and then obviously in the middle. And again, focus in a lot here because that's where my folds and my, you know, my snip in the middle is going to be. So I need to make sure that that is glued nicely down there. So we just pop this here. So these papers here, these are from my An English Country Garden kit or papers, background papers. So these papers, there's the papers and then there's the fussy cut flowers. Also with the same name. Okay, so spread that out nicely and then turn that over and, you know, again... <laughs> I know I'm just repeating myself here, but, you know, this is just my method that I find this easiest to just cut this, you know, alongside the envelope. So please do the method that suits you best. You know, I, I see people all the time who cut their papers to the size of their piece that they glue in them on. And honestly, I have tried that before, but that just does not work for me because I'm not an accuracy person, as you know. So seriously, if I have tried to then, you know, cut them to size and then stick them onto something that's allegedly the same size, you can just guarantee it's not the same size at all and they're not going to fit. So, um, yeah, for me personally, this is just far better to just actually stick the whole thing on, trim around it. And again, you know, sometimes I've obviously made the mistake of snipping into the envelope. That's fine if you do that. You know, and there's like a little gap here where you've snipped into the envelope. Just run a bit of glue in there and then just pinch it closed. It's fine. Okay, so again, just find roughly the middle. Like that. And again. 
again just fold my envelopes over. Okay. I mean, these are a little bit like my torn pockets that we did a few weeks back, um, but they were obviously up this way up and they were obviously torn here and they were made with paper instead of the envelopes. But they're a similar concept, but you know, they look completely different. And I always think that's quite interesting with the junk journal pockets is that, you know, they can be so very similar and yet they look really, really different. So, um, yeah, I find that really kind of interesting that such similar things can look so different. And I know that we've said it before, you know, because sometimes you do think, oh my gosh, you know, do people really want to see me making the same old things? But things look so different just by using different papers or, you know, different lace and things like that. So, um, you know, I know that I certainly always find it really interesting watching people do things because even if it's the same thing, that they're doing as somebody else, it can just produce completely different results. Right, so again, that's my book page. And again, what I'm going to do is just trim it down sort of here. And then I possibly will be able to use this piece I cut off for these, or for one of these anyway. So I'm just going to trim that down where I tore it earlier. Okay. And again, I'm going to take this out so that any glue seeping out doesn't just glue straight onto that big page. So, like that. Okay. And take my little piece of oops, book page, which actually I nearly, nearly didn't leave any room for, you know, for folding it over. So again, I mean, I've done this really, really the wrong way around, haven't I? And I should not have really done this. I should have trimmed it down. But, you know, again, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go in here now and obviously trim this around that fold. Okay. And then what you want to do is obviously, or you know, how, how again I'm doing it, is just fold that over now like that okay and then I'll untuck that and just apply a little bit of glue there okay and tuck that in like that okay have I got enough here to do this one? I don't think so. No, nope, I haven't. That's fine. That's fine. I can use this piece, which I know this is running now a different way to the other piece, but you know, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. So I'll just trim that off like that. Okay, so that's better. I obviously forgot to trim this one down when I glued that one on, so which was why I then had that sort of really <laughs> cack-handed way of actually trying to cut it to size. So yeah, I would probably recommend trying to cut these, you know, so you don't have to cut it around that flat, just because that's a little bit fiddly then. So there we go. And just going to go again across here. You know, really all you're doing is, you know, making this very strange shape so that you can then fold it in and then I'm just going to kind of just tear that piece off at the corner like that and again just untuck that and then I'll just apply a bit more glue and obviously I need a bit more glue here as well to to keep that glued into place there we go fold that over There we go. Press that down. Like that. Just get rid of any little bits that, you know, are looking a bit sort of not very neat. Just get rid of these pieces off of the desk and then 
this piece obviously I want to just slot in here I'll just check again that that's going to fit yep so again I'm just going to glue this you know lots of glue around here on what will be effectively the inside edge some glue here sort of in the middle to keep it glued down nicely and then just you know some glue here along the outside edge on the actual envelope itself like that and then just slot that in I'm going to have to do it upside down because it just feels like it needs to be that way up to to be able to do it there we go okay hopefully that's straight let me just line it up with the light there beside me and again just you know squash that down like that and then just turn it over and just trim it down on the back Okay, so that's our second one. Now I can't remember whether she actually glued these flaps down, um, but obviously I'm going to probably decorate this pocket, so I'm not going to glue them down just yet because obviously I, you know I might decorate it and I might have to slot something underneath. So I'm going to leave them sort of flapping for the moment. But aren't they gorgeous pockets? So thank you so much, Dee. They're really really nice. Right, so I've probably talked you through enough, so I could probably just do the others without waffling on. Obviously, I've got a couple of smaller ones here, so, you know, we'll see how they turn out. And the other thing is, I've got this one, which, you know, the beauty of this is obviously it's brown, which, I mean, I love the car, uh, craft coloured, um, you know, card and paper and envelopes and things. So, you know, this might not even need something on the inside. It might just look gorgeous in the craft colour. I don't know we'll kind of see you know in a minute but yeah so I'll just kind of do these and I might do these a bit more um uh, what's the word uh, what's the word I'm looking for assembly line assembly line style where I cover them all I cut the slots you know kind of more like that so yeah I will just now probably stop waffling on talking you through the process and just just cover them so for this one, actually, sorry, just before I stop, I thought I'd use this, which is my platform number two papers, because obviously isn't that gorgeous against the craft paper. So I just need to decide which way, which way I would rather have that. So I'm just going to cut it down here. Okay, so stop now, stop waffling on. I will just tell you each time sort of where the papers are from and things. Um, yeah. So I hope everyone's having a good week. I'm filming this again. I'm filming this on Sunday, which I don't normally do. I know I said that last week, but yeah, I'm filming it on the Sunday morning. So it's quite early. Everyone's still kind of in bed. Well, that's not true, actually. In fact, nobody's still in bed except for my middle son. My eldest son has gone to work because he was doing a long shift, kind of. Um, I think his shift was nine till finish, which is about nine o'clock tonight. Then my middle son is joining him at work because they both work at the same place at weekends now. Um, he's doing a three till finish. So we'll drop him down later on this afternoon. But he was at work. My middle son was at work all day yesterday. So he's now obviously having a lay-in um, this morning. So yeah, it's, it's about nine o'clock I think now. So my husband's just popped out um, to do a couple of things. So he's there and my daughter is downstairs kind of having a lay in playing on her tablet in bed. So yeah, she obviously loves doing that. So I thought perfect opportunity to come and do my mask making video. And again, as with last week, the reason I'm doing it today is because, you know, I know I said last week, but my husband and my son, they're on annual leave. They were on annual leave last week and they're on annual leave again this week. So obviously, you know, we're going to be doing days out and things like that. So I will try and do a couple of videos at some points during the week. But I mean, you know, I will still be uploading every day. Um, but, you know, I like to try and film ahead. So obviously, if I don't film at all, then I will be not 
fit onto a head if you see what I mean because I will have used quite a lot of my my videos that I currently have in the bank so yeah I thought I would get on and do this today because I might not get a chance tomorrow on the Monday which is when I normally would film the mask making videos so and last week if you join me last week we were going to be going camping or we were hoping hoping to go camping well we didn't get to go camping because the weather was pretty horrible for the whole week. Um, you know, definitely not the type of weather that you would want to be in a tent, certainly. So we did not go camping. Um, what did we do? We did go to Ikea, which I think I'd said we were planning on going to Ikea. So, yeah, everyone had their... You know, everyone had their hot dogs and what have you that they like to do when we go to Ikea. So that was one of the days. What else did we do? Oh, it was such a shame because obviously because we weren't then going camping. My middle son who, you know, he's quite new to his job. He's only recently got it. So he obviously is absolutely loving, you know, being able to earn some money and things. So he really wanted to go and do some shifts at work. So he obviously told them that he was, um, you know, available and... So he did a shift on the Tuesday and the Thursday, I think it was. So obviously on the Tuesdays and the Thursdays, we didn't really do that much because I don't really like doing too much when one of the kids are missing. So, you know, because it always feels a bit mean to do things without one of them. I mean, not that not that he cares, actually. <laughs> He's always like, oh, feel free, you know, kind of. I, I don't want to necessarily be seen with you anyway, because he's at that age. Um... Well, no, actually, that's not strictly true. He doesn't mind being seen with us, but I think I've said before, he has said now for, you know, probably over a year now, definitely no bike riding, no family bike rides together with him. Um, and I can remember my older son also going through that phase. Thankfully, he seems to have kind of come round again now. Um, but, yeah, my middle son, he's now escalated that. So it's gone on now from no family bike rides to now no physical activity, no public physical activity together, which includes obviously going for like family walks where people could see us. So <laughs> he doesn't mind going for walks, you know, like, um, you know, when we go sort of for walks in the country and things where no one knows us or, you know, there aren't really many people, but certainly things like walking into the town and things like that. And, you know, he doesn't really want to be seen with us doing that. So, and that's fine. I mean, I can remember being 14 myself and, you know, probably feeling similar ways. So, yeah, it's, it's normal, isn't it? Um, oh, these are my roses of red papers, by the way. Um, yeah, so that's fine. So, what was I, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah. So, anyway, he did some shifts because, of course, you know, he was pleased to be able to to go in and get some extra shifts in um but yeah so we went to ikea one of the days they obviously were able to have their hot dogs and things i just stocked up on some of their three pack of scissors because you know of course they're the ones that i love to use you know these big big set or big pair from that three set of scissors so yeah that was kind of all we all we picked up in Ikea. Um, what else did we do? Well, one of the days was absolutely horrendous weather. I think it was on the Wednesday. It just literally rained and rained and rained and rained the entire day. It was absolutely foul. So we did really nothing much at all. We went and got some you know, like pastries and things like that, um, to have lunch and just went and had kind of lunch in the car, like up at sort of a beauty spot, you know, near where we live, which of course was pretty pointless because you couldn't really see anything out of the car windows because it was so horrible. Um, but you know, it was better than staying in. I think that was pretty much all we did. And then we just kind of went for a bit of a drive about really to just, you know, I suppose we'd been out the house a little bit. Um, Oh, and another day we did go for a walk. Um, much to my daughter's horror, I have to say, because it was horrible. But, you know, I just said, well, let's put our Rain Max on and just go for a walk and get some fresh air anyway. <laughs> oh, 
we got drenched. And you know what it's like on those days where it's really, really pouring? I mean, it was quite warm still. I think it might have been last Sunday, actually, after I've done my, my video in the morning. But, you know, it was still quite warm. So we had our rain max on, but, you know, the, it wasn't cold or anything. So, but within like five minutes of walking, you're just absolutely drenched. It was one of those days. And, um, you know, I mean, I just always think, well, once you're wet like that anyway, it doesn't really matter, does it? You might as well carry on your walk or, you know, walk for a while because you're not going to get really much wetter. You're wet already. But yeah, she was kind of horrified and she said, I'm not doing a wet walk again. <laughs> so, um, yes, I, I obviously kind of took any enjoyment out of going for a walk that day. She was just horrified that we were even, you know, mad enough to go for a walk in that wet weather. We, we did get pretty drenched, I have to say. And then another one of the days we... Um, we do oh um so I think this was on Friday it was really strange weather because it was really 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 windy like majorly windy and um we went to kind of a near sort of town and we said well we'll, we'll have a walk along the seafront you know and they've got some arcades and things like that there so we did that and, um, sorry, I'm just deciding which way up I'm going to have this pocket. Yeah, I'll probably have it this way. Um, we went to the arcades there and, you know, just played on those two P slot machines, you know, where you put your two P's in and the, you know, the things are rolling for the, you know, dropping the two P's out, which we don't do that very often. But I mean, sometimes it's fun to just do things like that, isn't it? So, um, you know, the kids all quite like doing that. I mean, even my 17-year-old, he thinks that's quite fun. I mean, we're not sitting there very long, but um, it was just something fun to do. I mean, obviously, we all wore our masks and things, and, you know, that was fine. But, yeah, that was what I was going to say was, oh, my goodness me, it was so windy. It was the weirdest day because, you know, normally, as soon as there's a bit of wind, it makes it really quite cold. Well, that day was just so bizarre because... Even with the wind, it was still a really warm day. You know, we all just had, um, you know, short sleeves and things. I and mean, I just had a summer dress on, so did my daughter. It was just really bizarre. Um, but my gosh, the wind was so strong and so fierce. There were times when I could practically hardly, hardly walk against it. You know, it was so windy. It really was a bizarre day. But, you know, it was lovely to get out and have some fresh air. And thank goodness, you know, at least it wasn't walking or uh, raining or anything. So we didn't get soaked. So we had a nice time that day. Um, you know, I mean, it was such a shame because obviously, you know, my son especially, who's obviously been back to work now, you know, and he's taken, this is his first time he's taken leave. And, um, you know, he said, oh, I can't believe it. After all of that lovely weather, you know, now I've taken leave and look at the weather. And that's, of course, such a shame because, you know, it has been absolutely gorgeous for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So, yeah, it is a bit of a shame, really, for him. But, you know, I mean, we still have made the best of it and managed to do things, so it's fine. Okay. And actually, another one of the days, um, he had volunteered... My sister, she, um, she'd she had a new bathroom like years ago and they'd fitted like the wrong, I don't know, cable or something to her shower. It wasn't powerful enough for the shower. You know, the cable that the electricians had or the plumber or whoever had fitted, it wasn't powerful enough. So every time she'd ever tried to use the shower, it would trip her electric. And, you know, so subsequently... I think she'd had her bathroom fitted something like, you know, 10 years ago or something. And um, in all that time, she'd never, ever been able to use the shower, which, oh my gosh, how irritating. Um, and I think she tried to get electricians in and things like that since. But, you know, they're so busy, to be honest, that trying to get them to come round is a bit of a nightmare because, 
you know, they say they'll come round, they don't bother and what have you. And I mean, I guess like all of us, she's probably, because my sister is a bath, bath girl rather than a shower. So, you know, she obviously wasn't that bothered because her and her husband like to have baths and, you know, so it didn't really bother them too much. But anyway, for all that time, she'd not had a shower. So my son had actually said, you know, oh, I could um, change the cable out, you know, for a thicker cable kind of thing. So um, he did volunteer his services and yeah he went over to do that well of course like all these things you know it turned out to be a massive massive job because he then had to drill a bigger hole into her tiles and things which obviously that must have been a bit daunting in case he kind of cracked her tiles and things like that thankfully he didn't crack her tiles or anything um but bless him i mean he is only an apprentice and you know he's been in his job i think it's about 11 months now 10, 10, 11 months, you know, so I mean, of course, he's, you know, he's still very much learning. And when he's at work, he, of course, is always with the guys who he works with. So I mean, he's never actually kind of on his own doing a job. Um, you know, so I thought it was pretty brave of him actually to tackle the job in the first place. But oh, bless him, it took him the whole day on the Thursday. Um, and I think he went back down on the Friday for I think it was another two hours on the Friday anyway he stuck with it he he didn't break her tile or anything like that and he did manage to fit the new bigger cable you know it was things like he had to trace where the cable had run from and you know all these things anyway made it very very long and protracted and I'm sure he must have really regretted volunteering his services for that particular job but I was very proud that he had stuck at it because you know obviously being only an apprentice I mean you know and he's only 17 I just think well a lot of people would have probably just given up and kind of said oh I've bitten off more than I can chew I don't think I can you know I don't think I can do it but he stuck with it and um yeah he did manage to do it for her and she's thrilled to bits because I mean obviously she's had you know she hasn't ever had the shower working so of course she's you know absolutely thrilled to bits that she's finally got her shower working so yeah I was very proud of him and um you know very pleased that he stuck at it and it was quite admirable I think that he did so but he obviously I think thought oh my gosh I can't believe I'm now wasting my annual leave doing this you know which is fair enough because you would think that wouldn't you right just have that there um yeah and I just wanted to say thank you so much to all those lovely people who are joining me with my tidy Friday um as I say I mean I filmed literally a handful of those I think I filmed three or four um ahead to see if they're well received or not you know because obviously you know all these videos you don't know how they're going to be whether they're going to be popular or whether people are going to just think oh my gosh you know what is this rubbish um, so thank you so much to all those lovely ladies who joined me for the Tidy Friday. I really appreciate your um, support and your joining me. And touch wood, I mean, it seems like lots of people did enjoy it. So, and I've got lots more, um, <laughs> lots, lots, lots more organising and tidying to do, of course. Um, and, you know, we will just kind of tackle small areas each week I mean as I said I think in the workshop I mean tidying is just not my thing um you know I find it quite a horrendous chore really but it will be lovely to have things organized so I mean things like my stamps I've got loads of stamps and they are in chaos so that in particular I have filmed one where we start tackling the stamps but obviously there is a lot of work to do there so that's going to be a few different episodes will be the stamps um but they won't all be like in one go because of course you know that would be that would be very dull so you know we'll do kind of stamps one week and then like a couple of weeks later we'll go back to the stamps and do do the rest and things like that so um yeah but I really really appreciate your joining me that was really great thank you so much and, you know, who knows? I hope that maybe, 
maybe if your craft area is in similar chaos to mine, maybe we can all tackle them together and, you know, we'll all have much more organised spaces. And, you know, I mean, there's nothing better than sharing tips and sharing how we all organise things. And, you know, my, you know, my organising is definitely not a kind of, oh, this is a great idea. It's just a, let's see how this works, um, you know, method behind it. Because, you know, we're all just learning. And also, I do think, you know, sometimes we have to change our storage according to how we're working because you know sometimes we might use a lot of a certain material or something you know and so one storage solution might really suit us for a while and then we might sort of go on to working with other mediums or you know other things and so we might find that actually that storage solution no longer really fits our needs so I think it's very much a kind of um, I guess going to be a constant sort of process, isn't it? You know, and just being happy to alter things according to what suits at any particular time. So, yeah, but thank you so much. It was a really great start on Friday and I was really, really chuffed because, you know, you do always feel a little bit, a little bit nervous when you put things out there and think, oh gosh, you know, I hope I'm not just literally filming this to myself. Um, so I was really thrilled. Thank you. And the other thing, yep, thank you so much to all those lovely ladies who commented about the sewing machine last week. That was also really useful because, um, you know, of course it's handy to know, you know, what you guys really like and don't like. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the feedback really seems to be a little bit in the mass making is fine. Probably not an entire hour mass make at the sewing machine. And of course, you know, I totally get that. Um you know, there will be kind of other videos where perhaps they are all at the sewing machine, like when we did the Joey Diffie snippets, obviously that was completely in, you know, at the sewing machine. Um, but I guess that's a bit different to a mass make. So, you know, we were producing different, different things. So yeah, I really appreciate that feedback. So thank you so much to everyone who took the time to, you know, comment. That was really helpful. Thank you. There we go. And one other thing that, yeah, I wanted to just quickly um, mention. So I've had a few people who've mentioned in comments that they're no longer getting notifications for my videos. Now, I have to say, I have no idea, I'm afraid, why that would be. Um, I mean, as a, you know, a creator here on YouTube, I, I mean, I, maybe it's just ignorance. Maybe we do get more influence than I think, but I don't think we have any influence or power over kind of turning notifications on or off or anything else unless we do and I'm unaware of it which that would just never surprise me of course because I'm so rubbish with things like that but yeah so I have no idea I mean that's very very irritating and you know I don't know whether YouTube have done an update um I don't know and I can only apologise for why you're not getting them. I mean, the only other thing that might be worth doing, because I do remember a long time ago, somebody had said that they weren't getting notifications. And what they did, they unsubscribed from my channel and then they resubscribed to my channel. And you know where you hit the notification bell to get the notifications? They kind of re-hit re that. You know, when they resubscribed, they hit that notification bell again. And that seemed to sort it out for them. So that's the only kind of tip that I could offer, really, with regards to that. Because I honestly just have no idea why, you know, why that would be the case. Why the notifications would have stopped in the first place. I literally, yeah, clueless, I'm afraid. Um, I do appreciate, you know, those people who've mentioned it. Because, you know, that's really nice and helpful to know. I wish I had the answer and, you know, a little bit more power to be able to to bring them back. But it might be worth just hitting the unsubscribe and then the resubscribe and then hit that notification bell again. Maybe that will sort it out. I don't know whether it will, um, but that's the only kind of suggestion that I have. So this one here, I was going to leave it with the craft colour. Um, I'm not so sure now. I think perhaps the book page or something would be nice on here, actually. I mean, that looks lovely, doesn't it? So, yeah, let me just pull in another 
another bit of book page. Oh, I have got this one with the stamps. Hmm. Is that a little bit much? That might be a bit much, to be honest. Um, yeah, let me get some more texty, texty looking book page. Uh, oh, I've just stumbled across my scraps pile beside me and actually I've got some, bit, um, some sheet music. Maybe that would look better on this one. Yeah, might have the sheet music instead. So, <clears throat> okay. I'll just trim that down. Oh, what have I been watching recently? I have been watching Ozark. Now, I don't know whether anyone else has watched that. It constantly, during the lockdown, was coming up, you know, like on the home screen thing of Netflix, like saying, what are people watching? What's popular? And it seemed to be the thing that constantly was, you know, popping up on that home screen. It's with um, Jason Bateman and oh, I can't remember what the lady's name is. I've definitely seen her in quite a lot of things and she's a really good actress. But I apologise, I don't know what her name is. But, um, oh, it's really good. I mean, I have to say there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of bad language. So, yeah, definitely not one for watching with children or anything like that. So, yeah, not, not family viewing at all. Um, and there's obviously a lot of, oops, a lot of violence and things in it. Um, quite a different role for Jason Bateman. He's, you know, he's often in comedies and things, isn't he? And well, I mean, he's still playing quite a nice character, actually. His character is still a nice guy, really. Um, but you just see kind of odd bits where they're quite different for him. Um, but yeah, it's really good. So we've been watching that back to back, you know, every evening when we get the chance. And I think we're like episode three on, there was three series, serieses, there's three ser no, serieses on there. Um, so we're on episode three, I think, of the third series. And unfortunately, this is now the last series. They are apparently making a fourth series, but that's not up yet. So, yeah, and my sisters have both watched it and they both said, oh my gosh, at the end, it is such a shocker. In fact, my younger sister said that she even had to rewind it and rewatch, rewatch the last like 10 minutes of the last, very last episode in the third series because she couldn't believe it. So I have no idea what's going to happen there, but kind of very exciting, you know, that it's obviously so shocking, whatever it is that happens. So, yeah, are you guys watching Ozark? Have you watched it already? I mean, of course, you know, it might not be everyone's cup of tea because, as I say, it is really quite, you know, foul language and, you know, quite violent in places. But it is quite gripping and, um, yeah, it's, it's quite good. And it's just so lovely to have some things to watch, isn't it? So, yeah, that's what we've been watching. And, you know, presumably by... By next mass make, you know, next week's mass make, I will presumably have finished it. As I'm already up to episode three. I think there's ten episodes in the last of the, you know, in this third series. So, yeah, I presumably will have finished it by next week. Well, unless we're so busy this week that we don't get a chance to, to finish it. So this week we've got planned, what have we got? So again, we had moved our camping trip to this week you know, hoping to go this week. The weather doesn't really look very clever this week either. So, of course, we've cancelled the, you know, the campsite because it was quite a drive away and, you know, we didn't really want to kind of go all that way and have a really diabolical week with the weather. And so we thought it was only fair to cancel for the campsite, you know, so that they can obviously take other bookings instead and things, you know. So we've cancelled that. So, again, we're now kind of back to square one which is slightly annoying but um we're going to hopefully do there's this thing called go ape um i don't know whether i yeah i don't know whether it would be called that kind of in other places if like you've got similar things but basically what it is is um it's 
a what would you call it kind of like a treetop experience thing where you do like I think there's like zip wires and you know like kind of walking like ropes and things like that um yeah uh, between like trees and things now <laughs> we're going to hopefully do it um in a place kind of about an hour away from us and I've seen lots of people doing it we've been to this place lots of times for walks and things because it's a lovely place to go for walks and they have play areas for kids and things like that it's a really nice place to go um and I've seen obviously when we're there I've seen loads of people doing these um I think they just call them like a treetop adventure or I don't know something similar to that um so I've seen loads of people doing it it looks fun it looks quite scary because I'm a bit of a wimp I have to say um <laughs> so yeah uh, maybe we'll have bitten off more than I can chew and think oh my gosh what am I doing um but hopefully it's going to be really good fun so and I've checked on their website they seem to have lots of availability most days so we're going to just book like the night before for the following day when we decide the weather looks you know perfect for that activity um and they also have one that is suitable for you know smaller children so we will obviously be doing like the you know the one for adults and I think it's like over tens and then my daughter can do the one you know for um I guess it's under tens or under eights it might be or something so she can do that one and we will do the kind of big one so we might have to do it in shifts so that you know someone's or you know a couple of people are staying with my daughter whilst we're on the big one and then switch around so we'll kind of see but yeah I'll have to decide that when I'm booking it but yeah that sounds super scary I have to say so um I'll let you know how I get on oh who knows I might just chicken out completely honestly sometimes I I think I'm daring and then do these things and <laughs> realize I'm not as daring as I first thought yeah no I'm not daring at all really but yeah I love how this one looks. I love the kind of sheet music and then having the decorative paper in there. It just brings a completely different element. And yeah, these are my um, platform number two um, papers. So let's bring them back in because I think we're probably, I mean, I have stopped the video a couple of times, but I think we're probably like around the time I normally would de um, decorate one. So we've done five, which I don't think is bad going because obviously they're quite a fiddly-ish um piece to do you know fun fun and fiddly um but aren't they gorgeous so i really like how they look um so let's decorate one up which one shall we decorate mm -hmm. i'm kind of leaning towards this one because i really really love it mm, i do really love that no i'm not going to do that uh, shall i yeah yes let's do that one yeah i just love the colors of this one it's gorgeous isn't it so let me just get my ink I'm just going to ink up, especially like these um, uh, sheet music pieces, because obviously they're quite bright in comparison to the sheet music here in the paper itself. So I'm going to put that under there so I'm not making the other piece even darker than it already is, if you see what I mean. So that looks good now. It kind of ties that in like that. Okay. And I might just ink around just on like the very edge, like that. Oh, it's weird doing this on a Sunday. I know I did it last week on the Sunday, but it's just really strange. I feel like it's Monday. Yeah, very, very weird. Okay, right. I mean, to be honest, it really doesn't need very much else because it looks absolutely gorgeous just as it is. So I'm not sure what I'm going to add. So I've got this that I'd added. Now, I did this a couple of weeks ago in a different video, which might or might not be up, but it's probably a little bit big for that. Um, so I've got lots of numbers here, which, I mean, obviously, you know, these pages have got lots of numbers on anyway, so... You know, numbers might not be quite the right thing. Let's just have a look. Hold on. 
just rummaging through my little little box here. Mm. Oh, decisions, decisions. Or we could just have something like maybe, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's really nice. And to be honest, that's probably literally all that that needs because they just look so lovely. Or, you know, this one in particular, I just think looks so nice. It really doesn't need hardly anything else on there. So we we'll just ink this up. I'll link this number up. I can hear my daughter now. I think she might be coming up. Okay. And then I might have some lace here. So again, I've got this um, ivory lace, which I mean we could put there. Could have some here have it there that's quite nice oh, that, yeah that's quite nice I think actually I just want to check because I've also got some black black lace I just want to check that I wouldn't rather go with the black I mean the black is striking on there isn't it but actually no I'm going to keep it with the ivory I think yeah let's do that Uh, do I want it kind of more, more hanging out, I think. So just before I use that, I'm just going to check that I wouldn't prefer my, my crochet lace that I'm just really liking at the moment. Oh, I mean, obviously that's huge, huge. <laughs> Let me just cut it down. Mm, I mean, that's quite big isn't it not very delicate on there I mean I guess it just depends do we want delicate let me just cut this edge off because that looked a little bit sort of you know like liney so if we had it more like that mm. -hmm. it's quite nice isn't it let me just ink it up Mm -hmm. oh, I quite like it like that actually I'm just going to double check again just in case no I'm going to go for it with that that big piece I think so again just pull in my brads I know really 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 boring I always just just always use these brads but I just really like them oh and that was another thing was um obviously I'd sorted lots of the brads into that one pot um what well, two pots actually in the um tidy friday videos and loads of you had this brilliant suggestion to alter the brads um you know alter the colors and things so I'm going to hopefully have a bit of a play around with that um quite soon so just again it's a case of having time but you know that's another really good thing with the tidy fridays because actually i think they're going to spur on some other ideas for videos and things so yeah really you know love all your great ideas oh, come on why but I don't seem to be punching a very big hole in this today um yeah so hopefully that will be something else we can have a play soon but um it just is kind of getting around to, to having time to do that but but brilliant idea because that would never in a million years have even crossed my mind you know so really grateful for any suggestions because of course you know we're all just sharing our ideas on here, aren't we? You know, and that's how we all get ideas, isn't it? From other people making suggestions and kind of coming up with things. You know, that's how kind of ideas are born, isn't it? So, yeah, brilliant, brilliant idea. Right, okay. So, 
going to have that there. So I'm just going to glue that down. I'm just going to use the hot glue because nice and quick. Like that. And then of course, once this is glued in place, that will just really, really reinforce that lace. I mean, it doesn't really need that number, to be perfectly honest, but I don't know. Should we put that number on? Oh, well, let's just put it on because, you know, it's there and I've inked it up now. So let's just go for that. Yeah, great pockets, Dee Dee. Really great. Thank you very much. Okie dokie. And then perhaps we'll have a bit of lace or something on one of these flaps. Maybe just one. Or maybe here. That's quite sweet, isn't it? Let's just cut, cut that down. Some reason I seem to have inked the wrong side of this. Oh well. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to glue those flaps down, I think. Not completely, but just probably here. I mean, what you could do is kind of round them a little bit. So they have a bit more of a rounded effect. I don't know whether... I know this video is dragging on quite a lot now. It's probably taken up loads of your time. So anyway... You could probably roll that like with a pencil or something underneath and make it much more round, but maybe something like that would be quite nice. So I would just glue this down here. Kind of just in the corner. So it's still got like a bit of a 3D thing going on. Like that, rather than being completely glued down flat. It's now just got a little bit of, of height to it and a bit of interest and then just take my lace and I might just put the lace piece on there and to be honest I'm not sure even I need that lace on there I might not bother perhaps we'll just just have a bit of lace there or here or perhaps we'll have it there under the number look so here I'm just going to use my three and one because obviously this is gluing now onto that fabric so or the lace so I'm just going to glue that down and then just dab that glue here. Can't really see whether that's coming out. Hopefully it did. And we'll just then again press that down like that. Just hold it in place a couple of minutes and then just have this little bit here. Okay. Oh, what gorgeous, gorgeous pockets. I love, love, love them. Thank you so much, Dee Dee. Brilliant idea. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I hope that you like the pockets and hopefully you managed to make a few. Um, and thank you, Dee Dee, if you catch this. Really appreciate your lovely pockets. And yeah, I hope you all have a fantastic day and hopefully see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great day. Thanks then.